call that a quick attack because we're back already, baby. Um, yeah, so I guess we have River versus How coming up first. Yep, the first seed versus the eighth seed. Um, River, the player we saw most on stream yesterday, appearing twice and hopefully uncursed as his only losses yesterday were on stream. Oh, yeah, I guess that will be a little bit of pressure there. But also, I think, um, I, I personally, I've never played cut in a position other than first or eighth. Okay. And I've always won an eighth and always lost in ah, first, so I might have a bit of a curse okay, to deal with yeah. as well. I mean, if I can lose all my stream games on day one and win them all on get day two, I'm taking that all day. Oh, all right. Um, yeah, so I guess I think this is going to be one of the most exciting matches to oh, start yeah. with. I think How was really impressive on stream. I think these are the two players who were streamed twice um, yes. yesterday. Oh, was How also streamed twice? I thought so. Uh, I'm maybe, sure. I'm, maybe I'm being silly. Um, but being I think silly is good. Um, I think uh, How has shown us some really impressive play oh, yesterday, yeah. and so has River. Um, even though he ended up losing, they were both like really close games. Yeah, they were both games very River close. Easily could have pulled it out. Yeah. Um, so I think it's gonna be interesting to see. I think we've never seen River face a team that isn't also Snorlax. Um, uh. So I think it'll be nice to see. Like I think Snorlax caused him some problems yeah. in the previous in, in the previous day. I mean, it's very threatening, and like it becomes kind of awkward to deal with when that's the kind of game you want to play at the same time because then you kind of feed into it as well. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see him play Snorlax when he doesn't have to worry about another Snorlax. Right. Um, I think Howe has sort of the same matchup Adrian did, except he doesn't have the Snorlax that Adrian mm -hmm. played to. Mm -hmm. um, so I think he was a little stressed yesterday trying to figure out a plan, but he was spending a lot of time figuring things out. So hopefully he's got something good, and that'll be entertaining for us yeah. to see. Yeah, and I mean, there's a fun dynamic here because River, um, not a Canadian, I believe he's actually local, uh, but he won the Vancouver Regional while Howe, actually Canadian, did not win the Vancouver Regional. So you have this position where you can get the reverse home turf win. I would love that dynamic. That would be pretty cool. Um, I think as well, we'll have to see um, sort of how R River showed us like a lot of the Persian Manek trick. Yep. Um, sort of just playing out um, a lot of control. And then we'll need to see what how sort of has planned going into the set yeah. because it's very clear that that's what River's going to go for. Uh, but it's still hard to play around. Like, Gardevoir is supposed to hit Persian really hard, but mm. it just won't if it keeps getting snarled and parting shotted. Right. Uh, team preview appearing from River. Once again, we have Gothitelle, Manectric, Tapufini, Celesteela, Snorlax, and Alolan Persian versus Howes, Gardevoir, Amoongus, Incineroar, Aegislash, Tapufini, and Landorus Therian. Yeah, so I think as I was mentioning before, yeah. it, it's sort of really similar to that last stream match we had um, yesterday, um, except that there's no Snorlax right. on the outside. But, but that changes the dynamic a lot. Yeah, I think he does still have, like, the type of thing is going to be really useful for him. Um, and then so uh, it'll be interesting to see if maybe we'll see the Aegis Slash, but it's definitely going to be kind of tough to get, get that into the field. You know, River already locked in. I think he's thought about this a lot. And having really played this a lot, he's probably a bit more fresh on it mentally. Um, so it's not super surprising to see him be prepared, and I hope that prepa that uh, preparation works out for him pretty well. Yeah, and how locking in really quickly, mm, too. I think yeah. they both still had half of their time left. Oh, yeah. I mean, the preparation, especially going into top eight, you have so much time that really you don't have much of an excuse not to be ready. From River, we see the Manectric Tapufini leads, while from How we see Gardevoir and Landorus. Yeah, so I think the other the other tool we mentioned um, uh, that was present yesterday and not today is um, uh, an electric type. How, how does not mm -hmm. have um, a Zapdos or a, um, or a type of Gardevoir? Yeah. Um, so I think it's interesting that River's still thinking, okay, I've got to bring them an electric anyways, even though there's no lightning rod use, just having Intimidate and Volt Switch is so valuable. Yeah, and the Snarl was such a good factor for weakening that Gardevoir's Hyper Voice. We saw it so much yesterday where Gardevoir, I believe at one point, got down to minus three stages of special attack. Yeah, absolutely. If he can if he can trap Gardevoir in with minus three special attack or minus two even, then like that Snorlax is gonna have free room yeah. to do whatever it wants. Tapu Fini, I think, also looking pretty nice here. It threatens the lander as well while still uh, being bulky enough not to be removed immediately. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that this probably isn't what Howe was necessarily anticipating mm -hmm. as the lead from River. I think River's in a pretty solid spot just picking that type of Fini straight off the bat. Tapu Fini deciding to not stay in, doesn't want to take any unnecessary damage. Celesteela coming in, a Pokemon that handles both Landers and Gardevoir with ease. You're going to see that misty terrain uh, activate the seed, boosting Celesteela's special defense as Manectric powers up into its mega form. Uh, the Intimidate going to weaken the Lander as Therian. Uh, if it was an Earthquake, it's still probably strong enough to get the KO, but Celesteela looking in an excellent position. 
Yeah, I think I guess I was thinking that Buffini was really threatening, but Raven, yeah. I guess recognizing that Cell Steel could be even more threatening. Right, and it's safer. Yeah, and just getting at that positioning with a misty seat up. Um, I think we saw Cell Steel be a win condition in game one versus Adrian, and so maybe River sort of going for that win condition instead of Snorlax. Minetric pressing that snarl button, weakening both Gardevoir and Landorus effectively, and making Celesteel just look like a great wall here. It can't really be touched by anything. Landorus kind of recognizing that its power might not be super lasting, and you don't want to hit your partner with Earthquake, so he's just going to U-turn out, bringing a partner that can take advantage of this position just a little bit better. Yeah, we'll have to see which one it is. I guess it was just really tough to get that Earthquake off because you want Gardevoir to still be attacking right, right. now. So it's going to be tough for how to figure out how to maintain Landris being pressuring um, when sometimes it's just more of a positioning tool in this yeah. context. Incineroar takes the field, the second pair of the Intimidators, but this one much better at handing Celestila than the previous one. Uh, the Intimidate hit, uh, actually sort of mattering on the Celestila as we saw yesterday. It does not actually have that heavy slam. It's relying on acrobatics. So as the Hyper Voice is going to deal some pretty decent damage to the Manectric, uh, you can see the effects of Snarl, and you can also consider that uh, without Heavy Slam, Gardevoir is actually in a much better spot than you might n have normally thought. Yeah, even though it's minus one, still doing plenty of damage yeah. to that Manectric, and now the Incineroar is present and threatening the Celesteela. So I was I was a little um, surprised that Landris wasn't able to get any damage off this turn, right. but that positioning was just so much more valuable. Celesteela getting out of there, that Misty Seed boost gone as Tapu Fini returns to the field, doesn't want to take that uh, Flare Blitz damage for free, the Volt Switch hitting that Incineroar, no fake out there, just going probably directly for the Flare Blitz into the previous Celesteela slot. As Manectric Volt switching out, bringing what I imagine to be a new partner, but wouldn't be surprised to see Celesteela as Snorlax kind of creates that big rumble on the arena. Hyper Voice coming out, not doing too much damage to things to that Snarl from before. Both Pokemon very bulky on Riverside. The Flare Blitz is going to go into that Tapu Fini slot, I believe. Yep, and thanks to that Water Typing, not doing too much though. Um, uh, the combined efforts of Gardevoir and Incineroar enough to take Tapu Fini to around 50%. Yeah, I think Flare Blitz did almost as much as Hyper Voice did. Yeah, it, it was like, I don't know if it was the odd low damage of the Hyper Voice or the odd high damage of the Flare Blitz, but it looked a little too much to me. Yeah, it was pretty surprising. Um, I think also just it shows how valuable the Snarl is on the Oh, Tapu yeah. Line, because otherwise, Tapu Fini just wouldn't be able to switch in, but with that minus one, it's in a much better spot. Also, this. Snorlax is really interesting to see. Mm -hmm. I think I would have expected that to really only come out with the Valdetel, but maybe River's thinking, oh, maybe Hal will set up Trick Room for me, or maybe I'll just be in a strong position anyways with Snorlax. Yeah, might not even need it as the Hyper Voice once again causing some havoc there. Muddy Water retaliating two spread moves from these fairy type Pokemon, but the Muddy Water actually finding a super effective hit in the Incineroar. Not enough to pick up the KO, but you don't see any recovery from the Incineroar uh, as we saw yesterday as knockoff. You know, hitting that Snorlax, removing its berry, the frustration and retaliation on the Gardevoir, but not enough. Yeah, so that's that's really tough for River, just not getting the KO on either Pokemon. Mm -hmm. I think he had to pick really carefully with the Volt Switch on the previous turn. And uh, he went for Volt Switching the Incineroar, right. maybe hoping that that Muddy Water with Specs would mm -hmm. take the KO. And then it didn't. And then also, if he had just Volt Switched the Gardevoir, he would have been able to get rid of it, but yeah. not now. So sort of just missing out on both of those, trying to do a little more with Manectric than he was able to. I mean, the positioning, both sides really have such weakened HP that it really comes down to speed, and Gardevoir being the fastest thing on the field might be able to pick up the KO on Tapu Fini, and then Incineroar could pick up the KO on the Snorlax. Yeah, and River's going to have a tough time even positioning out of this, um, because if that cell still came in, it would just take a flare blitz. How r removing the Incineroar, going for the lander, is kind of getting another uh, Intimidate out, preempting Snorlax from... I can't really recycle, but Incineroar is just, or I mean, Lander is better for U-turn positioning as the Hyper Voice should be able to pick up the KO on top of Fini, leaving Snorlax with just an inch of health. See, that was pretty funny because inches are like, you know, measured in 12s, and that's uh, a foot, oh 12 yeah, inches. Okay. Yeah, you got okay, there you go. Math jokes, people. Uh, but, you know, successful turn for how being able to pick up the KO on top of Fini, drawing first blood, and leaving Snorlax in a position where it can't Re, uh, recycle, and it also can't really do much damage either. Celesteela returns to the field as these two Pokemon don't do too much to it, and Incineroar, being so injured in the back, creates pretty good opportunity for it. Yeah, I think um, the, it definitely worked out for how to leave the Incineroar in to get that knockoff, mm -hmm. but he does kind of need Incineroar for two threats here, and River's kind of forcing him to address yes. both of them. So like bringing the Snorlax out so that the Incineroar has to stay in to take the Muddy Water um, puts him in a better spot to maybe still win the, with that Celesteela. We know it's very much capable of just 
getting rid of all of the Pokemon on another side, like doing a 1v4 situation. Right, I mean, and we saw that yesterday in that situation where Celesteel was able to outstall an Incineroar and pick up a uh, late game uh, victory just by pressing Substitute and Protect in combination with Leech Seed. We do see the Amoongus appear for the first time. Um, you know, something that actually helps against Topo Fini a lot, but how showing that he didn't even need that to handle it. Snorlax being KO'd by the Hyper Voice as Celesteel takes some small damage. Um, more than it would have earlier because the Misty Seed was there, but now that's gone. Setting up a very safe substitute. Nothing on the field can currently break that. And the only thing really would be the Incineroar. Yeah, so I think that's really tough is um, how sort of played this positioning, thinking, okay, maybe I can bring a Moongus in to Rage Powder mm -hmm. away all of the hits and then be able to Flare Blitz with Celesteela. But now River can just sub until the Flare Blitz knocks Incineroar out. Right. Um, so I don't know if how's going to be able to get rid of the Celesteela. It looks like it'll be really tough. Maybe it looks very good. Maybe the Landorus... Uh, if it's strong enough, can like kind of rock slide and yeah. do some damage. Um, but that Celesteel, uh, I think, really smart from River to bring both Celesteel and Snorlax to say, hey, you have to take damage from Incineroar to deal with either of these, so I'm just going to throw both of them at you. Amoongus pressing protect. You don't want to take an overheat to the face when Amoongus has the potential to redirect so much. Overheat is going into that slot. River, uh, you know, uh, missing that opportunity to really protect the neck trick while taking such big hyper voice damage. It felt like more than last time. You see the acrobatics double tap and Gardevoir. We've seen this problem a few times where people uh, look at the snarled Gardevoir, think it's not strong enough, and kind of ignore it, and then that kind of ends up biting them in the end. Yeah, so like kind of the same thing as how people were ignoring Gardevoir at first because Pixelate was less strong. Yeah. It, just that whole sense of, well, it's not as strong as it could be, so it's not strong, but really it's still a mega. It's still strong. It looks like we're seeing a repeat of the previous turn, but this time without the successful protect. Overheat doing about 80%, very solid damage onto the Amoongus, activating the berry. I don't believe the Celesteela has the Intimidate, so maybe Acrobatics can pick up the KO here. Hyper Voice coming out before that, though. Uh, going to be able to do enough damage to knock out the Manectric, creating a true 1 versus 4 for Celesteela. Yeah, so I think it's also really interesting. This Gardevoir almost brought the Celesteela down to range of more Hyper Voices, um, where just because like the Substitute plus all the Hyper Voices plus oh. no recovery from the Celesteela yet. Um, and with, with that Amoongus surviving, um, as we just saw, things are going to be really tough for River. Yeah, and I mean, he has also the potential to redirect Leech Seeds which don't work on grass types, so you can't really get that healing factor here. So you have to deal with the Hyper Voice, or the Amoongus first, which allows them to just press Hyper Voice to get around your substitutes. Yeah, so I think we might actually see a Gardevoir B to sell a Hey, Stila. I'm all for it. A Rage Powder is going to be used here. Redirecting the potential Leech Seed, though, River should probably recognize that. Just go for the Acrobatics straight up. Hyper Voice going to whittle it down. Ooh, 33 damage. You won't be taking another one of those. There's no even way at this point that you can win because of the Rage Powder. So even though you do pick up the KO on the Amoongus, which would have been nice earlier, Gardevoir is going to be able to be in the position here to pick up the KO. Yeah, so I think River um, really was still playing that intelligently, like trying to get that KO on Amoongus. He like double targeted it, knowing that, oh, if I don't get it this time, maybe mm -hmm. I'll get it next. But then again, like there have been three Pokemon where he's tried to target them and just not done quite enough damage to any yeah. of them. And so with that Amoongus staying on the field, we thought the Substitute made Celesteela safe. It actually just lowered its health yeah. enough that <laughs> Gardevoir could KO a Celesteela. I mean, I guess it did prevent it from being spored, but ended up not being as big an issue as the Hyper Voice damage. I think Gardevoir has used Hyper Voice every turn. Uh, pretty much. I, I think it might have protected one Yeah, it protected like one time. Rock Slide uh, going out before the Hyper Voice. All that really does is indicate to you that the Lander's Therian is faster from than the Gardevoir. Potentially helpful information. Uh, the substitute is broken, but doesn't really matter. This Hyper Voice picking the, up the KO either way, taking game one for Hal. Yeah, so just nice for how to get that confirmation that, okay, Rock Slide can break this up. Yeah. Um, so now that now he knows that, okay, so maybe if Gardevoir hadn't taken down the Celesteel yeah. on its own, Gardevoir the hero, um, uh, he would have still had a win condition with Landorus, even though Incineroar was low. I mean, it's really time for adjustments on River's side. I don't know if he really has to change up too much from the choice, the team preview selection. Um, Snorlax could have done more, but I don't dislike the pick. I think more aggressive play with Tapu Fini earlier on would have really paid dividends there. Yeah, and I think switching it in on the Incineroar somehow didn't work out well for yeah. him. Like, you think of how is not being able to do enough damage after the Snarls and everything, but he still managed just fine by using a lot of attacks. Um, I think that was a really interesting match where like both players seemed to be pretty well prepared, and I couldn't tell who was going to win until the end. Yeah, I mean, the multiple win con kind of scenario from River. I like the idea a lot. It's like you deal with my Snorlax or you deal with my Celesteela. In pa on paper, it's 
a pretty threatening combination. Uh, but one of the big things there, I think, is actually the combination of Incineroar and Moongus. You have so many tools to kind of play around both. You have the knockoff, which prevents the Snorlax from having basically infinite health. And you have that Amoongus to redirect the Leech Seeds, force you to press Acrobatics, um, which doesn't really directly threaten Gardevoir either. Yeah, I think it was really interesting to see Amoongus somehow being part of Hao's plan against the Celesteel that mm -hmm. had a really strong flying move. But somehow that ended up working out really well for Hao, just like having that sort of positioning and being able to, even though River has the tools to keep him from being able to do damage on any one turn, yeah. uh, Hao has the ability to sort of make sure that he can attack over many turns and then sort of just accumulate damage in that manner. Going into game two here, going to be interesting to see the adjustments from both players, not just River, though the pressure is more on River, of course. I would not be at all surprised if Hao just stuck with the exact same four. I think they worked out very well. Uh, his own Tapu Fini, maybe, I mean, if you expect Persian, could be cool, but Gardevoir handles that fairly well. And you do see the exact same leads from Hao and Gardevoir and Landris. While from River, you're going to be seeing the Manic Trick and the Snorlax instead of the Tapu Fini this time. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see if River has a more, more of a plan to sort of use that Snorlax this mm -hmm. time around. Um, before, it really just got like a frustration off on Gardevoir and then fainted. Yeah. Um, so I think if River can find a way to use that slot more effectively, then that'll be really useful. Gardevoir actually getting the lightning rod there. This is a situation we entertained a few times yesterday, though it never actually happened. But in such a situation, uh, Manectric not really even wanting to press its electric moves too much. Uh, you really are going to be focusing on the stat decreases that you can apply to the other side. Yeah, so I, I guess just it sort of limits um, River's options a little bit. If he wanted to go for that Volt Switch to not have to worry about the Earthquake, like now he mm -hmm. kind of has to go for Snarl. So maybe maybe how is more incentivized to sort of go for a Protect Earthquake, maybe try to yeah. catch the Manectric. I mean, Lander's Therian is also fairly scary. Even if you can Intimidate, they tend to have Knock Off, maybe even Superpower, something that can sort of cut off Lax's offensive momentum fairly early on. Yeah, it'll be in uh, interesting to see what kind of plays how has to Snorlax. Like, clearly, this is a well-thought-out lead. It worked yeah. well for him last time, even though it didn't seem like a good lead just because of the U-turn. But maybe right. it also, like, Landorus has some pressure against Snorlax in particular. Do you see Tabu Fini come to the field uh, sort of looking like uh, the turn one situation of last ga game, except this time Tabu Fini is the one coming to the field instead of retreating from it. Manectric going into its mega form, indicating no raw switches from uh, how, but very possible U-turn. The Intimidate weakening that Landorus theory and once more as the Gardevoir entering its own mega form, not valuing that lightning rod too much as there really is no incentive for Manectric to press Volt Switch. Yeah, and absolutely not at all. I think the lightning rod helps sort of like psychologically, but yeah. it really would hurt how to not be just using Volt uh, Hyper Voice. Yeah, it's a little cheeky. Uh, the Snarl coming out, weakening the Gardevoir once again, uh, both Pokemon effectively at minus one. Lander is again recognizing that such very possible situation, you turning out, dealing not too much damage at all to the Tapu Fini, but last game uh, you saw the Incineroar able to come off from the U-turn and have very good positioning. I wouldn't be at, at all surprised from the Amoongus here. Um, sort of the designated Tapu Fini answer on house team, but wasn't even necessary in the last game. It's so interesting that Amoongus is a Tapu Fini answer when like it can't score, <laughs> yeah. but like, it's just got the type advantage against all it the It really does. Uh, so we do see that Amoongus indeed as the Hyper Voice, uh, you know, singing that song and causing some havoc Weakening both to very slightly above 50%. Yeah, I think Tabu Fini, like, a little more comfortable than the Manectric here. But, yeah, I think it's just a little tough for how, because there is that Manectric stone, the Overheat did do a fair amount. Um, mm -hmm. Like, the Amoongus took the Acrobatics pretty well, but the Overheat took it down, like, almost 80%, yeah. I think, in the previous game. Um, so if Finny gets off an attack and then Manectric overheats, it can KO through yeah. the berry. I mean, you can also just press Snarl and, like, Muddy Water weaken both. You're not afraid of Spore in the Misty Terrain, and then on the next turn, you're totally free to press that overheat. Yeah, absolutely. One thing I might have liked to see from how is both both games, River sort of just fearlessly kept his Manectric in against the Landris. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would have liked to see maybe how try to go for that Earthquake sometime. Like, if, if Gardevoir doesn't get minus one, it's going to yeah. be really scary. Yeah. Snorlax returning once again. Oh, a double switch, actually. Uh, how probably anticipating that is. And Amoongus not doing too much, risking the water move, but not really believing that Tapu Fini was staying in. As Incineroar takes the field, now you have that fake out pressure, weakening the Snorlax from the get go, and knowing that because of uh, Incineroar's assault vest, you couldn't do too much damage anyway. The Volt Switch hitting the Gardevoir, but the damage output really isn't there. You're going to see another Hyper Voice come onto the field. And now you're in a position where, because Incineroar is there and there's fake out pressure, no matter what you really bring in, the next turn is not going to be a good position for River. 
Yeah, this is so tough because you want to bring in Finny here for positioning, but you can't let it take the Hyper Voice. Yeah, so you want to bring in <laughs> Celesteela, but then it's against an Incineroar. Uh, yeah, exactly. I think you might have to bite the bullet there and kind of go Celesteela because if you bring in Tapu Fini, we know it's choice specs. There's nothing that really prevents a fake out Hyper Voice play except for the pressure of Belly Drum, which you can kind of handle to some degree. Yeah, because there's no Trick Room from Riverside. Hyper Voice, you know, once more, but the we the Snarl is showing Celesteela basically taking nothing thanks to the combination of Misty Seed and Steel Typing, while Snorlax pretty comfortable through its own natural bulk. Yeah, so this might be the turn that we see Gardevoir, like, not use Hyper Voice once and maybe switch yeah. out to try to reset its stats, but you might also just see it stay in to try to catch the Tapu Fini. I mean, um, we are in a similar situation yesterday where it's interesting to see the speed difference between the Celesteela and the Incineroar. Yeah, I think that's going to be really important for River to know. Um, if he manages to make it through this game, it'll be important for Game 3 playing yeah. as well. Gardevoir is switching out for the first time in the set, bringing in Landorus Theory and getting another Intimidate off, putting Snorlax at minus two stages while Celesteela at minus one. And a very safe switch in just because the stats are sort of lowering on their side. We see the Incineroar actually faster than the Celesteela this time. Flare Blitz going right in, picking up the easy KO. I don't even believe that's a crit, and it's not on the Celesteela, and that's pretty important considering it sort of walled three of uh, Howl's Pokemon. Frustration hitting the Landers, but because of the Intimidate stacking, it's not going to do nearly enough damage. So River must have been hoping there that the Celesteel would have been faster, just trying to go for the sub. Yeah. The Flare Blitz just got rid of it entirely. That puts River uh, in a really bad it's spot here. very difficult. You have an injured Tapu Fini and Manectric, and neither of uh, Tapu Fini does look nice here in that it ha threatens super effective damage on both, but he doesn't have a hard time positioning it at all because of that Amoongus and fairly healthy Gardevoir in the back. Yeah, so we'll have to see. Maybe the Tapu Fini can gain a little ground for River back, but it's going to be really tough to do enough damage here, I, especially in the face mm -hmm. of that Landorus. Yeah, opting to go for the Manectric, uh, really valuing the Intimidate, and I think that's the correct play. You need to get that Intimidate where it matters the most. Yeah. Gardevoir and Amoongus uh, don't care at all. Oh, yeah, I guess this is like the one position where Manectric gets yeah. as much Intimidate as possible. Uh, uh, maybe it's time to start trying to go for the belly drum on Snorlax, but in my mind, there's no way Incineroar doesn't stay in to guarantee the knockoff on that slot. Yeah, I guess the one thing is, if Incineroar does stay in, um, then it is bringing it, like, it is getting into the point where Muddy Water will KO it. So yeah. Maybe there is a way that that Finny can sort of protect the Snorlax, but it looks like River just doesn't quite have the positioning here. No, I don't think, I, I think Celesteela was so important for creating that Tapu Fini situation. Tapu Fini it does pressure these two a lot, but you really need Celesteela to supplement that. You see Snorlax get out of there. Tapu Fini uh, switching in for its partner's knockoff. R River recognizing that the only way he can win this game is through Belly Drum Snorlax. Overheat smack in that Landris. Not nearly enough. That super effective damage on Amoongus maybe uh, altering his view on just how much output that had previously. U-turn hitting Manectric for pretty solid damage. Going to bring something in totally safely. Amoongus probably doesn't really care too much about either of these things. So the overheat drop on the Manectric, lowering it to two stages. Oh, but actually the Gardevoir just realizing that, hey, I'm in a position where Hyper Voice, I can just press it and win at this point. And Cinnamar is going to go for that knockoff. Not as devastating as it would be on the Snorlax, but losing the choice specs, uh, really weakening your damage output. Yeah, I think that might be enough to save the Incineroar from Muddy Water Kicks. Yeah. Um, I think at this point, if Hao doesn't lose Incineroar, you kind of just kind of keep spamming Hyper Voice and then have Incineroar there to knock off the Snorlax at the right moment. Incineroar switching out, want to keep that knockoff and fake out pressure in the back, and Amoongus really just doesn't care, especially since Misty Train will be going away on the next turn. Snarl once more, weakening the Gardevoir, but at this point you're injured enough where even through the Snarl, Hyper Voice is going to be dealing a ton of damage. Hyper Voice, you know, just screaming in their ears. There's no serenity here, and Manectric just can't take it. You know, dogs, they're dog whistles for a reason. They are much more sensitive to sound than we are. Scald going to be hitting that Incineroar slot, but the Amoongus doesn't care, especially with the loss of choice specs. Yeah, so Hau's been playing the sort of Amoongus-Incineroar combination really, really well. Yeah. Like, I don't, they have such good type synergy, and then also having Intimidate Fake Out to Regenerator, and they both benefit so much from switching out and then switching back in. It's just so cool to see that. Yeah, and at this point, impossible to reset the Misty Terrain. It's almost, there. I don't think there is any counterplay to pressing Hyper Voice and then pressing Spore. Yeah, so how actually recognizing that he could get Amoongus in at exactly the perfect moment. Right? Yep. I was thinking in Cinderella was his win condition, he just said, oh, well, Amoongus can Spore now. Yeah. I mean, I think he has so many options at this point that it's a little, um, it, well, not a little. It's very easy for him to make good positioning plays because he has all those options. You do see the Hyper Voice pick up the Tapu Fini KO as Amoongus outspeeds the Snorlax and gets the safe sleep on him.
Yeah, so I think it's pretty much over for yeah. right now. I mean, the, uh, even if he can play incredibly safe at this point and go for Intimidate Cyclings, you'll have that fake out pressure. You're free to press Hyper Voice. You're free to get Gardevoir out to bring back m more powerful Hyper Voices. You have so many options. And with the Sleeping Snorlax, which is kind of its normal state, so you'd expect it to do a little better, but not enough here. And it, it looks like River uh, recognizes this and might just go for the forfeit. Yeah, I, oh, I think he's sort of like torn here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a little rough situation, but you do go for it. Uh, it does. It is very unfortunate. You don't want to quite go out that way. You want to at least try and play your outs, but it's just such an overwhelming uh, position-based dominance that he couldn't really have done anything there. Yeah, so that's really tough. I think we didn't get to mention it, but I thought that was the coolest play I've, I've seen in a while of how doing that hard switch um, to Incineroar from Amoongus. Just that, like, yeah. That was so I, – I don't think – I know that double switching is a thing that happens a lot in singles. It but is, I don't think yeah. I've ever seen it in doubles. Oh, really? Like, you turning into something and then immediately switching it yeah. out. Yeah. That was so, it gained him so much momentum. He got rid of the Cel Celesteela so quickly. Yeah, I mean, I spent a few years as a singles player myself, and double switches aren't the rarest thing there, but uh, it's a skill that maybe a lot of people don't recognize in the doubles format as much, and I really enjoyed that play as well, just because those kinds of switches are what kind of, not only are they very much momentum in your favor plays, but it's also like, I know what you're going to do. This position is mine. You're going to have to think a little better than that. Yeah, so I thought um, Howe just played amazing positioning there. Yes. And even though River had all kinds of these control tools, Howe just said, I'm going to use Hyper Voice as many times as I possibly can. I'm going to oh, do yeah. as much damage as I can, and I'm going to play to that in center. I'm going to yeah. buy as much time as I can. I mean, we kind of saw it yesterday as well. The Snarl wasn't really enough as of a detriment to stop people from pressing the Hyper Voice. It's dealing enough solid chip damage that you're going to take that positioning, one that where people often ignore the Gardevoir in the first place, and just take what is basically free damage at that point, even if it's lower than what it would have been relatively. Yeah, so I guess like two minus one Hyper Voices is still more than one yeah. Hyper Voice. So you just have to attack twice as often and then you're okay. I mean, like, it's not super hard to pull that off when people are so comfortable going, oh, well, he's going to switch, it's weak, and now I can focus on the other thing. Yeah, absolutely. I think also we saw Amoongus sort of benefiting from that longer game that mm -hmm. was going on. Mm -hmm. That, like, there are ways to control Amoongus' spore, but not infinitely. Right. And so with that type of thing, having to focus on offense, it wasn't able to continually have Misty Train up. And so how had that really clean end game at the end? And then the positioning for the Celesteela on Riverside, a bit unfortunate. In the first game, he had to switch out so early, losing that Misty Seed boost for basically free. He didn't have to worry about that at all. While in game two, sort of risking it all on the, the um, potential for Celesteela to outspeed Incineroar, which got him a big victory yesterday, trying to repeat that process. It would have been huge, maybe even completely different. And of course, it's really impossible to tell, but that when Celesteela was KO'd was the moment everything just fell into place for Hao. Yeah, I think Hao just had a really offensive Incineroar in just the right ways. It was yeah. just fast enough and just strong enough to do. And way just more bulky damage. enough. Yeah, uh, it just barely survived. It did enough damage to Finny to threaten it in game one, and it outsped the Celesteela and one shot in game two. Yeah, I mean, it, at least as far as this set goes, Incineroar was perfect in every way. It, it was able to take those muddy waters. It was able to do enough damage. It outsped Celesteela. I don't even think it ever really pressed fake out. Its presence enough was essentially a free fake out. Yeah, it was it was so strong in yeah. this context. I think it really showed how Gardevoir archetypes have gotten so much stronger just with oh the yeah. existence of Incineroar and how you can sort of play that um, positioning game with Amoongus and Incineroar, especially because mm -hmm. there's no Tornadus Therian like the, or Tornadus right. Incarnate with yeah. like Defiant. Yeah, like used Defiant, to be like not nearly as strong as it used to be. Uh, back, in, back in 2013, you could always stop the Scrafty mm -hmm. Amoongus, but now that doesn't exist. Yeah, I mean, Tornadus won Worlds that year but just because of the power of their physical flying offense and strong enough to remove Amoongus very easily, but then like scary enough that kept you from really positioning Intimidate as freely as you might like. And yeah, and now without that, Incineroar plus Amoongus is so scary. Yeah. All right, well, uh, the second set should be coming up fairly soon. I believe it should be Quinn Johnson versus Jeremy Shackets. Um, shouldn't take very long to set up, but also stay tuned. We'll be back in just a sec.